Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and when last we left off I connected the Pipulate project which was running by typing python space pipulate.py to the Flask web framework for Python which uh, lets you invoke Python code from a web browser, a lot like Apache or Nginx would. And you'll recall when I hit mike11seo.com colon 8080, which is port 8080, it initiated the question mark replacement. Well, I'm a complete noob to Flask, so I started doing my reading. And as it turns out, the interactive debugger which is what you get when you set debug equals to true to get these useful messages here, allows the execution of arbitrary code. This makes it a major security risk and therefore it must never be used on production machines. Well, by having this rule in my router to forward port 8080 to my Raspberry Pi, it's in use on a production machine. So as you can see, I uncheck marked the rule, it disabled it, and now, any attempts to get to that address, the web page is not available, even though it actually is still being run. And a little detail I should probably chime in is this little H up here is a proxy that I'm running on my, or VPN proxy that I'm running on my Mac so that my traffic looks like it's coming from elsewhere in the world so that my router can't do the clever little recognizing an internally hosted uh, domain and serve the router homepage. I want to see it the exact same way the world sees it. And so they can't get to the Raspberry Pi on port 8080 anymore, which leaves me with how am I going to test this application? All the documentation out there assumes that when you're using stuff like Flask developing, quote, locally, your local and your local machine, the machine you're sitting down on as if it has a GUI in a web browser. I'm using the Raspberry Pi as a headless web server and so I don't have the option of doing localhost here. Localhost refers to the Mac I'm sitting on, not to this, which is where Mike11SEO.com is actually being hosted. To get to that, I'm going to have to use instead of localhost, the IP, which you can get from your router software and various other ways. And if I do that, question mark replacement should be triggered off once again. So this is kind of a lesson in, uh, I guess, getting started with uh, Flask or any new tool. Uh, read the documentation. I've got a lot of learning to do today on, uh, on Flask you know, not the least of which is getting rid of this internal server, which I believe is being, you know, created simply because I'm not returning a value from the function that's being called uh, whenever the, the home page, uh, the root page slash is hit. Uh, I guess I'll end this video with a little reminder of what this code actually looks like. I control C out of it and what's making that happen. LS vim hello.py and uh, when def hello is being hit see this decorator says well I could follow the whole flow here there's tricks being used and basically uh, a lot of these Python web frameworks and even Node.js and everything use this decorator trick which basically puts a, a wrapper around a function that detects a pattern uh, of, a, of a URL request. When that pattern is uh, detected, it routes it into the function. And uh, in fact, I don't have debug turned on, so I never quite had that risk. But still, uh, I will be turning debug on as we go inevitably, and it's best not to run that risk at all. And uh, so if I just return something here, put the uh, return hello world back in, I should get rid of the internal server error. Uh, 
and still have question mark replacement. And that will be a good starting point uh, because there's quite a few things I need to step through now. So I do a refresh. No, nope, still the, oh no, there it goes. It went to hello world. I guess it waited until the main execution of main was done. Got rid of the error. So what do I need to do? Well, I did the hello world. That was yesterday. I'm going through just my general education uh, about the conventions and configuration. I'll probably be adding a static and a templates directory, which is their initial conventions. Uh, I just told you about that. And the request context is really important because I'm going to be loading uh, a page as a result of hitting a bookmarklet. That's something I'm really I'm going to show you on the next video of my bookmarklet decisions. But when I do that, I actually need to be able to pull in values that get sent on the get request and eventually on the post request because I'm going to be allowing uh, file uploads. I need to communicate with the user. There's this thing called message flashing, which looks like it might be really useful. Uh, after doing a post or a get or something, you need to send some messages back one time to the user. And then finally, uploading files because uh, in addition to just hitting a bookmarklet and initiating question mark replacement on any Google spreadsheet that's displaying, I have to provide the opportunity to upload a CSV file for processing and subsequent offering of the download link. And so that's my mission today. And it all looks like everything is pretty uh, formally and well documented, uh, supported under Flask. So that's good news. I don't need to make any uh, dramatic changes of approaches here. And I'm going to take a really minimal uh, user interface build approach as you'll see on the following video. Well, thanks for joining me. I uh, hope to see you again soon and don't forget to subscribe.